Uh, this is Ira Glass, and I'm from This American Life. And the people at Borders have asked me to walk through the store and point to some stuff that I like. And, um, and they've pointed me here uh, to the poker section to start the whole thing. And it's, I have to say, like looking at this section of poker books, it's really sad how many of these books I've read. Like if we were to walk over to the poetry section, nothing. They have here the classic Super System, which was the first uh, book. If you look at this, this is, a, this is like, this is just an incredible uh, book with chapters on each of the various poker games. Uh, kind of one, one of your basic ones that you want to read. Caro's book of poker tells. Anybody who plays poker is pretty much, uh, this is this is one where, where he has like this sort of the the basic rules that if somebody pretends that they're, um, they're strong, usually they're weak and vice versa. All this sounds so stupid when I say it here, but he's very smart in the way he says it. Um, I got into playing poker because of a story that we did about, about uh, professional poker players and, uh, and what is it that they know that a good civilian poker player doesn't know. Uh, and, uh, and because of that story, I became sort of obsessed with the game and was playing every day, actually, for a while, though that's, that's long over. Honestly, one of my very favorite ones is this one right here. It's Phil Gordon's Little Green Book. It's beautifully written. And, um, and uh, once you get past the beginning, uh, learning the basics of poker. At some point, you have to master the idea of pot odds, pot odds and implied odds. And I've got to say, somebody who's read like 15 books on poker, he does the cleanest job of it in here. He does it in just a couple of pages, very lucid about it, and gives you a couple of uh, a very simple, uh, like here are rules of thumb to remember, which is really all you need once you get in the game. But pot odds are actually a lot simpler than, than you think. OK, we're here in the football section. That's right, we're starting with poker, going to football. It's going to be cigars and babes next. I'm a very manly man, as anybody who hears my radio show knows. Um, there's a book here. This is like my favorite book that I've read recently. It's The Blind Side by Michael Lewis. I feel like this is a nonfiction masterpiece. I, I say that without any hesitation. He's writing about uh, the offensive tackle, uh, which is a position in football. And uh, this kid who becomes the number one uh, high school player in the country and uh, he's just a kind of kid out of nowhere who shows up at this all-Christian white school in Memphis, a school, as, as Michael sort of cheerfully says, that's sort of like one of these places that is designed to keep white people away from black people. And he's this uh, African-American kid and uh, shows up there. And just there's a series of crazy, unlikely scenes with people who, by the time you're halfway through this book, you just love. It's just like, and I feel like Michael Lewis has created uh, like a, an entirely original way to write about um, uh, race and class where um, it's just really fun to read. It's just really fun to read. And he himself is so, has such a light touch. He's so uh, amused by everything that's happening here. I, I just, this is my favorite thing. I would recommend this to everybody. I've bought probably 10 copies of this um, for various friends and, and people. So we're here in the comic section. Um, and I came here because I wanted to pull out Chris Ware's book, Jimmy Corrigan, The Smartest Kid on Earth. And if you don't know about this, uh, you see, just he's an incredible, just draftsman. He's just an incredible. He includes these things for you to build in the book that I'm sure nobody ever cuts out and builds. And what this is, it's a story of several generations of people, uh, all in the same family. And uh, he's just an incredible storyteller, combined with an incredible draftsman. And then there are these moments like this one. I'm just going to turn to one at random, where this is actually one of my favorite pages in the book. Where, uh, where the kid, this kid is imagining he's going to meet his dad, who he's never met. He's going to meet him for the first time, and he's imagining who his dad is going to be. And then it's just so perfect comic booky as he's imagining all the different dads who are going to show up. Like, is this who it's going to be as he goes through? It's just so beautifully done. OK, let's go somewhere else, shall we? So we're in, I don't even know what section we're in. We're in some section of a Borders store. And, um, and uh, over here, we, there are these three anthologies uh, put out by this uh, literacy group that Dave Edgar started uh, called 826. And 826 is in various cities around the country. If you happen to live in Chicago or, or New York or Los Angeles or San Francisco, I mean, a few other cities besides, I think, um, you can volunteer in these liter literacy groups. And these, all these books were done as, uh, as fundraisers. David Sedaris did a book called Children Playing Before a Statue of Hercules, which is really wonderful pieces of uh, fiction that David chose himself. And, and truthfully, they're from all eras. Some of them are funny. Some of them are, are not funny at all, but incredibly moving. Um, seeing David do that, I did, <laughs> I did this uh, anthology of nonfiction work, just completely ripping off David's book, but you'll see without quite as nice of a cover. 
Um, stories by Malcolm Gladwell, Jack Hitt, Chuck Kosterman, Susan Orlean, um, and, and again, just these are favorite pieces of nonfiction writing. And then Jeffrey Eugenides just did a, a book, and these are all love stories. Um, and uh, Jeffrey Eugenides, who did uh, Virgin Suicides and other books, uh, has these, and also kind of it's sort of a spectacularly fun book to read. This is like the most Alton Brown thing I've ever done. So shall we move on? All right, let's move on. Um, this is my tissue art. I actually don't know what this is at all. Um, I see a Neil Pollock's book, Alternadad, is here. I entirely oppose the premise of this book that if you're a parent, it's important to be cool and to make your kids cool. Um, over here, we're in, I guess, the psychology section. Uh, this is actually my mom's book. My mom was a, a clinical psychologist and a researcher. She, she saw a lot of couples where, uh, where there was infidelity, and she started doing research uh, into infidelity uh, with surveys and other things. She saw hundreds and hundreds of couples. My mom des designed this book as, as kind of both, a, um, both a, a summary of what her findings had been from seeing hundreds and hundreds of couples and all, and all, the, cl and all the other research that she had done, but, uh, but, and also just a very practical kind of... Uh, kind of guide for people if they were in a marriage and one person had cheated and they wanted to stay together. There were all sorts of things that she had learned over the course of her practice that she wanted to share with people who might be in trouble. It's called Not Just Friends. <clears throat> I find this to be a totally eccentric book. Like, I loved it, uh, but I feel like he goes back and forth between arguments of utter compelling reason and then just these crazy sections where he goes on a tear about like, well, why, why, are, why are all the world's religions against pork? What is it about pork? And almost in a kind of like Andy Rooney, like, what's the deal with pork? Um, so I, f I love this because of just its utter eccentricity. This is a book that I've probably bought more copies of than any other book uh, for people. Um, and uh, it's Bill Buford's Among the Thugs. And, and it starts off with, with a premise that uh, where he was living in England, he's an American living in England, and he decides um, uh, that he, beca he became very interested in in soccer hooligans, these guys who after soccer matches would go and go on these rampages and turn over cars and beat people up. And he was just trying to figure out, like, what, what is this about that this happens every, every weekend, you know, after every game? And he starts to hang out with them. He's wandering around with these guys. They hate his guts. They distrust him. They don't like him at all. And he's completely frank about that with, with the reader. And, um, and then he, he finally sort of gets through to enough of them that, that he, can, he can, you know, talk to them. And, and then at some point, he becomes really interested in this thing that is just so big and universal. And it bec the book becomes about, like, what is the pleasure of violence? Like, what is the pleasure of being in a marauding crowd? And, and in between the chapters, he has these very, very old quotes uh, going back hundreds and thousands of years from other writers who have noticed the kind of delirium that people go into when they're in a rampaging mob. Like, what he's, what he's talking about is, is, in a way, like, being part of a rampaging mob is as built into us as falling in love is. Like, it's just a part of us that they're ready to be activated. Okay, so he's out with these guys. They're drinking incredible amounts of booze. He's wandering around with them. And then he says this. He says, the thing about reporting is that it's meant to be objective. It's meant to record and relay the truth of things, as if truth were out there, hanging around, waiting for the reporter to show up. Such is the premise of objective journalism. Uh, and I believe that maybe that concludes our tour. That concludes our tour. Um, thank you for shopping together. Thank you very yeah, much. Thank you very Thanks much. Thanks a lot. Hi. My name is Kate. It's nice to meet you. This is my friend. Hi. 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 Hi.